Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about the Oregon State uh, Oregon game as well as the Apple Cup between Washington and Washington State. Cannot wait to see those games on Saturday and hope I get to see them for quite some time to come. Um, but let's get into some questions heading into week three. We did a couple yesterday if you want to go check that out, but let's get into the couple that I have today because there are a ton of teams that are heading over to group of five opponents this week and my biggest question for that is just why? Why are you going on the road to a group of five team because that is an outright recipe for disaster and the biggest one this week is Virginia Tech heading to Old Dominion this is an Old Dominion team that is coming off a game against South Carolina that at the very least they feel confident about you know they feel like they probably should have won that game and at the very least that instills a little bit of confidence that you can compete with some of these big time teams and it's going to be really interesting to see this matchup because Virginia Tech on the other side has not played clean football they are the team that I was very wrong about in the preseason, and actually I'll probably get into that later, uh, probably next week, talking about where I was right, where I was wrong through th uh, three weeks of the season, but this is one that I definitely would keep my eye out on, and I don't know why Virginia Tech decided to go up to Old Dominion to play this one, but the other one is Oklahoma State at Tulsa. This is another really tough game, another in-state opponent that very much wants to beat you. So I, it's one of those games that Oklahoma is coming off a tough emotional win against Arkansas where they did not play elite football by any means. Went to double overtime, very, very tough win, and Tulsa's coming in with nothing to lose. This is their Super Bowl, as people say. This is the one that they want to win pretty much more than any other one on their schedule, and if they can get it, they would be the story of the weekend like NIU was a week ago. So it's a very, very interesting game, and going over to Tulsa to play it makes it all that more interesting. And then we have a game that just outright a good game. We have a game that I don't think there's much division between these teams overall. Since it is heading over to Miami of Ohio, and since he's only favored by three and a half in this game, Miami of Ohio might be the best team in the MAC, and we saw what the MAC can do a week ago. So this is one of those that I wouldn't even be surprised if Miami of Ohio was able to come out here with a win. And it's one of those things that we'll talk about in my hot take segment that there's a lot of different chances for group of five teams to get a win this upcoming weekend over power four teams. And a couple other examples, Vandy's going to Georgia State, Utah's going to Utah State, although doesn't seem like all that great of a Utah State team, but if you don't have Cam Rising, things get maybe a little bit more interesting. And then BYU at Wyoming, a ton of teams that are heading to group of five opponents, and I just have to think that a couple of these are not going to end very nicely for that group. But the other question I have is, are we being lulled into a false sense of security once again? Last week, all we heard was, this is a week slate, there's going to be no drama, there's only one big game in Texas, Michigan, and then everyone else is like, okay, we'll watch that, not all that interesting. I feel like this week is getting even more of that talk. There are a lot of games that maybe they aren't the marquee, you know, top 25 matchups that we're all like love to see every single week. No doubt about it that this week is a, a little bit different in terms of the slate. It doesn't mean there can't be craziness out there because we learned last week there is plenty of craziness that we do not even see coming. So it's one of those things that I think we do this pretty much every single year, especially early on in the year, where we have all these aggressive opinions about teams. We have all these really intense thoughts about these teams that maybe aren't all the way true because we haven't seen them quite enough for them to feel really like a finished product right about now. So we're looking at this slate and we're saying, you know, maybe it's a, a favorites week. And I believe I picked a lot of favorites this upcoming week. So maybe I'll be the one with egg on my face on Monday. But at the end of the day, college football is going to keep you on your toes. And this is one of those weeks that I absolutely love because you got to stay on your toes. There's not a game that really stands out above the uh, bunch. So you can bounce around. You, you can find the game that is as, uh, really close in that third quarter and flip over to that one and not feel like you're missing out on anything. So it's kind of a weird diatribe. It's one where you don't really have those big time games. You don't have those marquee matchups, but you can spread yourself out. You can watch all of college football and then I almost promise you, you're going to get a lot of incredible moments. So whenever anyone tells you it's a weak slate, whenever anyone tells you this weekend is straightforward, do not believe them. Just plain and uh, straightforward, do not believe them. It is going to get a little bit crazy this weekend. You're going to want to make sure you're tuned into this one. And then the other question I have is kind of just a general question about college football. 
do we need the AP poll this early on? And I'm not necessarily saying we don't need rankings this early on because obviously we like to talk about stuff. That is kind of the reason that the AP poll comes out so early is it gives us something to talk about on Monday morning, gives us something to essentially be mad about on, su on Monday morning. So it's one of those things that I fully understand why they do it. I'm not confused by that by any means, but there are so many differences in the way that the AP poll shakes, is shaking out throughout the first parts of this year and the way that it probably should be. When you talk about a team like Clemson, who played a Georgia team and did not play well by any means, but bounced back the next week, beat App State, I'm having a hard time understanding how that team is ranked below Notre Dame right about now. I understand Notre Dame got that win at A&M, and that is a big-time win. I'm not arguing that. They followed that up with a downright terrible performance and lost the worst loss of the entire season thus far. So it's hard for me to say that Clemson is a worse team right this second than Notre Dame. Now, I don't necessarily know if it's the other way around, but the reality is it feels like the AP poll is a lot of just reactionary early on, and then you figure out your, you know, water finds its level at some point, but it's one of those things that every time those first couple of weeks of AP polls come out, you're just looking at it dumbfounded. You have so many different questions about why is this team top 10? Why is this team over this team? Why was Georgia Tech w ranked last week after what we saw from Florida State against Boston College? There are so many different questions that I have around the way that they go about the AP poll, and I'm going to still put out my rankings. I still think you can put out rankings, but if you're going to add 25 teams into this thing this early on, there's going to be a lot of issues that just plain and simple. So I think 10, maybe 12 up until week four, and then you expand it. I think that would be a normal way to go about business. Now, I have no thought that this is going to change by any means. I have no thought that they are going to listen to me and totally change the way they go about business. But man, this year in particular, it feels like the AP poll is just getting to my wits end. I, I'm getting a little bit tired of some of the AP polls that I'm seeing early on, so just wanted to get that off my chest just a little bit this uh, uh, right now. But the thing I want to talk about next is this the week of coaching narratives. We look around the uh, schedule, there are so many different games that maybe don't jump off the page in terms of the teams, but there are so many coaches that are coming into this week just to having a little bit of a side eye from their AD right about now. I think South Carolina uh, at South... Or, LSU at South Carolina is a spot where either one of these coaches could be in a very interesting spot watching this uh, after this game. And I don't necessarily think they'll be on the hot seat after this game, but a lot of LSU fans are getting very frustrated with what's going on with Brian Kelly. That's just plain and simple. I've seen plenty of them getting mad, including the guy uh, T-Bob Herbert, who is an absolute beast and leads the LSU uh, uh, fan base as far as I'm concerned. But South Carolina on the other side, Shane Beamer did a great job last week. No, dis no uh, doubt about that. If LSU comes in and railroads you this week, then you're right back to the way you felt after the Old Dominion game. So it's a very interesting conversation where it felt like Shane Beamer kind of buy, uh, bought himself a little bit of time last week, but it might just come right back down to earth this upcoming week. And then every time we talk about this, we have to talk about Billy Napier. And I kind of hate it because I kind of want to leave him alone for a little bit, but the reality is this is a win that he likely just outright needs. If he does not get this win he will lose this fan base. I feel very, very confident in that, and this fan base will be fully ready to ship him off, and it won't necessarily be them wanting to wait until the end of the season to do it either. So it's going to be really interesting, this one, and Billy Napier is has pressure on him from the second he wakes up to the second he goes to sleep every night, but especially on Saturday, he's going to have to execute nearly perfectly, or they're going to be in a lot of trouble. I'll just be totally honest, but there's another guy in Florida that has a lot to prove this week, and that's Mike Norvell. I think this is an interesting game because I don't think Mike Norvell is near the hot seat. I don't think he is someone that is going to get fired at the end of the year. I do think there are some issues that need to be fixed, and I do think some of those issues are going to be really hard to fix if you start 0-3 and go into an ACC schedule where you can't even guarantee a win over Syracuse. You can't even guarantee a win over Wake Forest. So it's going to be really interesting to watch this. And that's actually my next question is, <clears throat> what happens if Florida State falls this weekend? What, uh, what does everyone react as? And how does that Florida State fan base handle this? Because the reality is, this is not a fan. Uh, this is not a program that is in a position where you can just get to the end of the year, reset next year, and be totally fine. Because 
they have issues that need to be fixed that are going to take time. They have to be able to go into the uh, high school ranks to recruit way more often than they do right now because that's the big issue with this team. You have so many transfers coming in that you don't really have any depth behind them that is confident in this system. So this team looks very clunky and the depth doesn't look all that better because you don't have guys that have been there for very long. So it's one of those things that you're likely going to have to lean a little bit more into recruiting and lean a little bit further away from the portal and that doesn't happen overnight. You have to put together a couple of really good seasons to get to the place that they're going to have to get to because you have Miami climbing. You have Florida doing weirdly good work on the uh, recruiting trail, although that could come to a screeching halt pretty quickly. The reality is Florida State has so many different things to change. And if they lose this weekend, they have Notre Dame, they have Clemson, they have Miami on the schedule, they have Florida at the end of the year. They are not in a position to where if they lose this game where they couldn't lose a couple of recruits along the process. And then you're in a position at the end of the year where you're saying, well, we got go- we have to go back into the portal. We have to build a team again through the portal and just see where the chips fall in 2025. So it's going to be a really, really interesting next uh, rest of the year if they do fall on Saturday because then you got a lot of recruits asking questions that you do not need them asking right about now if you're Florida State because you need those guys on the field immediately. So it's going to be interesting to watch this one. Florida State has to make some big program changes, and they have a lot of work to do that. And then finally, what quarterbacks need to deliver this weekend? I think Tyler Van Dyke is the number one answer. He has to play elite football. He might just have to play the game of his life on Saturday if they want to get this one done. Very, very talented player, but we haven't quite seen a lot from him the last couple of years. He is someone that really needs to perform, and I think a lot of that O-line needs to be a little bit better against this Alabama D-line, but he has to hit open receivers. He has to be able to hit those big-time moments that he has been really, really tough at throughout his career and especially the last couple of years. And then Connor Wegman is another guy that just needs to play well. There are so many fans in that A&M fan base that are questioning how good this guy is, if he's someone that can really lead them to the promised land. And this would be a place to kind of prove a little bit of that wrong. Go into the swamp, get a big-time win, play really good football, a lot of people are right back on the Connor Wegman bandwagon, and I might be right there with them. And then we talked about him, but John Mateer is another guy to watch in this group. Has to put on a show for Wazoo if they're going to be able to win that Apple Cup. But overall, I think there's a ton of questions going into this weekend, and we'll get a lot of answers. It'll be fun to watch this unfold, but let's take our last break here. We're taking a little bit too much time here, so we'll try to speed through this last one. But let's take our last break, and when we come back, we're going to get into the Hot Take Thursday. We're going to get into all of the takes I have have for week three and a couple of big time performances and a game going on tonight that might just be one of the games of the week but we'll break that down right after this so stick with us